This is part five in our series, and we will be moving the stairway to the outside of the building. Along with making the roof a little steeper, we have a 12 and 12 pitch here, and the roof will be sitting on top of the floor framing. And during this series, I've already had a couple of viewers tell me that you can't balloon frame a wall, and you can't bolt the floor to the wall framing studs. And I'm not here to convince you that you can or cannot use any of the methods in my videos. My job is to provide you with a few different methods. And your job will be to choose which one you're going to use. And at the same time, don't forget that building something like this might require structural engineering and local building authorities approval in your area and I have positioned the door here so that it will have easier access to the upper floor. If the door was over here, you'd have to walk all the way around or walk through the garage and go around this way. Next step, let's go ahead and install our floor, 12 inch on center, two by 12 with mid-span blocks. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this, get a different view here. And of course, our drywall backing for the ceiling along with our stair deck connection here we are going to slide a couple of beams in here and you could always cut this out of one piece of lumber instead of doing what i did here notching this board over the beams but we are going to be dropping the beams here we usually want the outside deck to be a little bit lower than the floor However, the way we're going to be building this one here, it's really not going to matter. But I went ahead and dropped this anyway. And you don't need to run the beams all the way to the joist. So something that you could do if you had extra material kind of a thing. And by extra material, I would just suggest doing this if you had an 8-foot piece of lumber. And you could cut those two pieces out of that 8-foot piece of lumber. I'm not suggesting that you need to use a 10-foot piece of lumber when an 8-foot piece of lumber will work. And let's not forget that there are different ways to build this deck. I'm running the beams over to sit on top of a 4x4 post, along with running the rim or the outside board here past both the back and front edge, and then using a strap to connect everything together. And of course, this strap can be located on either side here. Now let's go over to the front here, give you a good view. And hopefully I am providing you with enough views of everything, along with the footings for the post and the stair stringers. And if you notice, the stairway is coming past the edge of the building. And something like this might not be what an architect would like to see. However, if you don't have a choice, because the top of the stairway needs to be located at a specific spot, then you will need to work with what you have. Now, I do have a space in between the stairs and the wall to allow for whatever type of exterior finish like siding or stucco. So this stairway will have a gap between the wall and the stairway. And that could save us a few dollars in waterproofing the stairway when it connects to the building. A view of how the stair stringers connect to the beam here. Next up, let's go ahead and install the stairway decking and the floor sheathing. And we are using 2x12s for our decking here and the stair treads. And the steps will need to be ripped down to 11 inches. This board will be 11 inches wide for our stairway, along with the 2x8 risers that will need to be cut down just a little bit, maybe about an eighth of an inch. Let's go to the other side here. Go to the top. Again, our gap. And let's not forget that the gap between the top decking and the floor might need to be a little smaller than the gap between the stairs and the wall to prevent a trip hazard. And as always, if that does not make sense, it will if you make that mistake here. Next up, let's go ahead and install our base plates along with our roof rafters, 24 inches on center, along with the notches for our lookouts or outlookers. And the bottom of the rafters will need to be shaped so that we can use a smaller piece of fascia board. And this was another issue from one of our viewers. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And I will be trying to answer those in future videos. And hopefully if the individual watches this video, they will get a better understanding of how you can shape the rafters 
to allow you to use a 2x8 or a 2x6 for fascia board instead of a 2x12 or 2x10. Next up, let's go ahead and head to the top here where we can see that we will need two boards for our ridge. And I'm using a 2x12 and a 2x6. Otherwise, I would need a 2x16 here. And that might be a difficult piece of wood to find in different parts of the world. And of course, this would be another option you could consider along with reshaping the top board here so that this part will not be hanging down from the fascia board. Our collar ties, and they are spaced 48 inches on center or every other rafter on two foot on center spacing. And let's not forget that this roof here will be extremely steep and difficult to roof or install the roof sheathing. And that sounds like another video that I will need to make. Next up, let's go ahead and install our roof rafter blocks with the shaped top so that we can get better nailing through the roof sheathing and into the blocks. Next up, let's go ahead and install our gable studs. And our gable studs will be installed 16 inches on center. And this side of the building will be a little different than the other side where we are going to need a door. And of course the doorway should provide you with the first clue why we needed to position the stairway in this location. Because it would have been difficult to install a door if we moved it over. Or should I say a door that you wouldn't need to crawl through. Next up, let's go ahead and install the fascia board. Another view of it there with our outlookers. And we are using 2x6 for the fascia board here. And we will have plumb cuts on the bottom or a cut to where the fascia board will be vertically plumb. And if you can, shape the top of the fascia board so that you can get better roof sheathing nailing. And for the last part of the video, let's go ahead and install our roof sheathing. And in this video, I wanted to show you what a smaller piece of roof sheathing would look like and how some of us might be tempted to use them because of the roof sheathing prices. And a good example of that would be spending another $100 or $200 to sheet a floor or a roof. Next up, let's take a look at the underside of the building here, the roof eaves, the rafter tails and how they've been notched so that you don't need to use larger fascia board. You can see that right here, along with another view of the fascia board and the sheathing. And hopefully if you live in an area where it snows, that the snow won't be sticking to this roof. And of course, another reason why you might want to use a roof with a slope this steep. And let's wrap this video up by taking a look at the sides of the building here. And again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment area and I will try to answer them as soon as possible.